Yo, what's going on everybody? Bungie just dropped a twid that has a fair amount of info regarding Into the Light, and in today's video I'll give you just the short version. As always, feel free to read through the twid yourself. Oh, and by the way, ring the notification bell because I'm going to be putting out a recap video sometime on Monday about literally everything coming in Into the Light, just so you don't miss that video. Oh yeah, and we got more Helldivers 2 content coming as well, just FYI. First up, we got reprised exotic missions, but if you watched Bungie's third Into the Light stream, you already knew that. You'll be able to get the Whisper of the Worm and Outbreak, which are both becoming craftable exotics akin to Revision Zero. We got three new PvP maps coming on May 7th. And by the way, I know for a fact that because Bungie included these three maps in their Into the Light stream, some folks out there might be thinking they're coming on April 9th, but no, just to read Reiterate, these maps are coming on May 7th. They're not dropping with Into the Light. Character customization, though, is coming with Into the Light, but you won't be able to change your origin, aka change from human to awoken or anything like that. Also, Bungie's giving one additional name change, which is probably a huge deal to a lot of people out there. If you've got an in-game name like Vex Offender or Suck My Cabals or whatever name you thought was fucking hilarious when you made it at 12, good news. You got time to make one more mistake before Into the Light drops. Maybe go ahead and add Adept to the end of your name. That's a good one. Can't go wrong there. Moving on. No Pantheon info. Disappointing, but what are you gonna do? We have three twids remaining until Pantheon, aka the new raid boss gauntlet thing, drops on April 30th, so expect one of those days to have actual info on Pantheon, but it ain't today. Bungie gives us a reminder that they've got a final shape developer gameplay preview on Tuesday just before Into the Light drops. Reminder, I'll be co-streaming that, aka just watching Bungie stream while live. With that in mind, if you want to be part of a live stream chat that is actually readable, feel free to join me on my Twitch channel on Tuesday. Also, if you watch Bungie for 15 minutes, you'll get the Tigress Fatty Emblem, which is also coincidentally my new future porn or wrestling name, whichever career I branch off into after this one. You can also get additional progress on the Though those who held deer and echo diamond emblems too during that stream. Moving on to an update from the PvP strike team. They got some changes to competitive, including swapping game types around to hopefully make the experience more fun. They also mentioned something kind of wild. For 3v3 clash, Bungie is reintroducing the ammo crate system, like that thing from all of D1. This is really unexpected, and I'm kind of not sure how to feel about it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of liking the special ammo meter system that we finally landed on right now. I feel Bungie kind of cooked with that, and even though this will definitely have a little D1 nostalgia type feel, I'm sure, but I'm worried it might not play very well. I do kind of get their follow-up reasoning, because it's Clash, teams can just get the lead, and then camp and bunch up together and play like a bunch of chodes, and ammo crates at the very least force players to move around the map. That being said, again, kind of a major change. And competitive players really enjoy their comp. Couldn't we have done a little experiment with this in PvP labs or something like that? Going back to that issue that we've spoken about before, I wish that they would utilize labs more often. Seems like a real go-to situation for a change like this, but I digress. I will at least give Bungie credit for wanting to experiment at all to try and improve PvP in any way, as opposed to just ignoring it, but I don't know that a change that big rolling out with zero external testing is a fantastic idea. Moving on, kinda, but not really. Bungie is also going to be experimentally tweaking the special ammo economy in Trials, again, saying they've heard feedback that, quote, it doesn't feel quite right. Here are the details there. For the first two weeks of Trials and Into the Light, they're going to fiddle with it. On week one, they're going to be running unrestricted special ammo crates, where all four ammo crates spawn in every round, one by each team's initial spawn, and two in neutral locations. Locations. On top of that, players who have special ammo will drop it on death. On week two, they'll be experimenting with a restricted version of ammo crates, where only two crates spawn in each round. Players will still lose special ammo on death, but will not drop special ammo that time. Again, this is all so Bungie can gather additional data and feedback on how both amounts feel and play, and to potentially alter the future tuning of the special ammo economy for trials. Really trying to not be a goddamn negative Nancy out here about the ammo stuff, but man, I am really happy with the current iteration of trials. I very much like the new special ammo meter, which we worked really hard to get to, by the way. There's more primary fights. I'm really enjoying trials, and I really kind of wish this
this experiment wasn't happening at all. Again, I know they're experimenting to see if they can make trials even better than it is now, which I respect. But man, again, I thought trials was finally in a really good place with the special meter change. Now we're kind of turning the clock back to D1 a little bit. At the very least, it's only a two week experiment, but I am worried that it means that in the future, they may end up changing trials again to a different system, one that I potentially might end up hating. However, I'll continue to keep my official position of if the majority of the player base enjoys the experimental changes a lot, and it's better for the game and the population numbers overall, I'll just deal with the new system and keep my mouth shut. Just wanted to go on the record and say that I think Trials is in a pretty good spot right now. Don't think we need this change, but again, if it's better for the game overall at the end of the day, I'll shut up and deal with it. In competitive and both experimental ammo weekends in Trials, the not swap modifier is getting tweaked so that if you change your weapon mid game to one that uses different ammo, you'll lose all of your ability energy like if you changed your class. That is a good call and I get why they're doing that. Trying to make sure you're preventing people from just burning through all your special ammo, then slapping on a kill clip heliocentric mid match or whatever. We got a terms of service update moving forward if you intentionally ever with or manipulate matchmaking to gain an unfair advantage in any way, thou shalt be banned. Take note, this will not affect players who play in mixed skill fire teams or get carries from Defizzle or insert favorite trial Sherpa here. Bungie goes on to mention two things that were in the 7.3.5 patch notes by mistake that are actually dropping with Into the Light. One of them is about comp rewards, which is kind of complicated but cool, and the other one is a great change to trials loot. The post-game Trials weapon rewards will now only grant the weekly featured weapon. Meaning, if the Adept weapon is the Summoner, all post-game weapon drops will be the Summoner. Again, that is a huge change that will make it way easier to target farm rolls in Trials, and I can't wait for that change to hit. We got some details on weapon balance changes coming with Into the Light, some we already knew about, others we didn't. Here is a recap. Breach loaded grenade launchers are getting an impact damage buff, and honestly, telling you right now, the mountaintop is going to be really good in PvE. Like, genuinely very, very good. Unfortunately, that comes along with a disorienting grenade launcher nerf, the damage and disorienting radii getting shrunk by 15%. Still think it'll be good in PvE though. Lightweight bow base damage is getting upped a tiny bit in PvP, which I'm fine with because it isn't being given to the Monarch or the Wish Ender. 450 RPM auto rifles are a tad too good and their base damage is going down by 5%. I went over that in a recent auto rifle video you should go and check out. They'll still be great in Into the Light, just slightly less forgiving. 180 and 140 RPM hand cannons are getting a mild tweak to how forgiving they are, especially with explosive payload on adaptives. In Into the Light, you'll be able to 3-tap guardians with any level of resil with explosive payload. Rapid fire frame, lightweight, and adaptive pulse rifles are all getting a mild buff. Some of those might go hard next week, stay tuned on that. Rapid Fire Scouts are getting a 2% damage buff, and if you listen closely, you can hear all the crafted fang of ear ute fans looking around nervously, noting no mention of a nerf at this point in time. Precision Shotguns are getting a minor fix that I'm sure no one even noticed was a problem to begin with, because everyone out here using conditional finality. Whisper of the Worm getting a total ammo buff, yay for the craftable version next week. 1k Voice is getting a total ammo buff, yay. Quicksilver Storm finally getting nerfed after being an insanely god tier PvE weapon since its debut. Now it's going to take longer to build up grenade charges and the AoE damage is going down a fair amount. However, even with all these changes, I still think it's going to be a very good gun in PvE, just not insanely OP. Last word, getting a 6% base damage buff, good news for the Carrot Commander, and Forerunner getting a damage issue tweaked, but don't worry, nothing really really change in there. Bungie gives a little info on the Recluse and Luna's Howl damage perks, which they'd already talked about on stream, but here's a little recap if you want to pause and give that a read. Also, Bungie is looking to make more micro-missile frame grenade launchers in the future, which is kind of interesting. We got a few PvP-only changes, including a very minor Wish Ender nerf, an ammo fix, and a Sunshot buff, but the most important change here by a mile is that flinch taken by all primary weapons is going down by 
15%. That is a big change that I'm really looking forward to. Getting flinched in PvP sucks, and I love that they're doing this. Golf clap from me. If you don't have Strand yet, they're reducing the cost of Strand meditations with Into the Light, and they're also adding a new light tutorial skip and something called a new light kit. The kit apparently designed to help bridge the gap between new players and veteran players. The kit is a bundle that contains a curated set of gear and subclass abilities, and there will be nine in total. I I love that they're making things easier for brand new players to get into the game. Kinda hate that this new light kit may make it easier for cheaters to come back faster on alternate accounts after getting banned, but that's a whole different issue altogether. Finally, when Into the Light drops and the new activity Onslaught comes out, Bungie is going to reward the first three fire teams to complete all 50 waves on Legend difficulty with a mini replica Shax helmet. On a related note, I'd like to announce that I am officially the first person to complete that challenge. G G no re. But for real though, this is a great idea on paper, kind of like an extra different version of a day one raid race. My only question is why, Bungie, is the reward something that people out there already can own? This 100% should have been a unique emblem and that would have been so incredibly badass. For real, can you imagine being one of nine people worldwide to have an emblem that literally no one else can have or ever have because you crushed a challenge that Bungie claimed on one of their live streams would be borderline impossible. That would be unreal badass. And the number of teams jumping in day one for that activity and even the number of people watching teams on Twitch would go way, way up. Kind of a missed opportunity if you ask me, but I like the core idea of it and I hope in the future Bungie does more stuff like that, hopefully with emblems, or maybe if not emblems, things that you can't get anywhere else. But I digress. Let me know down in the comment section how you feel about all the stuff coming in Into the Light, and again, sub to the channel for more content I'm sure to be grinding out next week and beyond. Thanks very much for watching. Peace!